Hello, my name is Jen Shin, a PhD student at KAIST UVR lab. Our paper is titled, A User-Oriented Approach to Space Adaptive Augmentation, The Effects of Special Affordance on Narrative Experience in an Augmented Reality Detective Game. This research began with Fragments, an augmented reality game developed for the Microsoft HoloLens. In this game, the player tracks down a kidnapper on the loose by finding clues augmented adaptively to the surrounding space. You can also see that virtual characters are leaning against a real wall or sitting on an actual sofa, which all contribute to a heightened sense of being and belonging in a fictional world blended into reality. With these space adaptive features, the game's mission is to provide compelling new possibilities for storytelling and gameplay in whichever room you play. This got us thinking, would whichever room really provide the level of immersive narrative experience the game aspires to? That is why we decided to explore how affordance is configured by real spatial features of various types of rooms, namely traversability and visibility, affect narrative experience in this game. We first wish to learn how traversability and visibility as determined by the size and layout of a room impact the gameplay. Second, we sought to observe and analyze how users actually move and perceive in the adaptive augmented space of the game. To answer these questions, we defined factors of traversability and visibility. Next, we set two size configurations and three types of furniture layout for six study conditions that each provided differing levels of these spatial affordance parameters. In a between subject study, 72 participants played the first stage of fragments in one of the six conditions. Presence, narrative engagement, usability, workload, and game enjoyment were measured with post-study questionnaires. Task completion time and the participants' positions during the game were also recorded. The compilation of videos from each study condition shown here will give you a clear picture of how our study was conducted. Results show that presence was significantly higher in the large rooms than in the small, with an interaction effect for layout. Narrative engagement was significantly lower in the centered layout than the peripheral and scattered. Usability was significantly affected by size, it being higher in the large than the small. On the other hand, there was no significant difference across all conditions for game enjoyment, perceived workload, and task completion time. Regarding movement, the heat maps show that in the large rooms, the range of movement was widest in the centered layout. In both size conditions, the form of movement as represented by the accumulated trajectories was also most restricted in the center. In addition, participants generally chose not to venture out to the outermost non-functioning areas of the rooms. For viewing behavior, we found three patterns. First, participants felt a greater disparity between the real space and the augmented space when the game scene was more visually complex. Second, common blind spots were found in the scattered and centered layouts, whose locations are shown in the figures. Third, they tended to link the semantic features of the real objects to their role in the augmented game space. We believe presence was highest in the large centered condition on account of the fact it afforded the widest range of movement in the most restricted form, allowing more exposure to and control over one's physical activities. On the other hand, we posit that the same condition was unfavorable for narrative engagement because constant shifts in user position and viewpoint, along with blind spots, hindered users from creating a cohesive narrative thread from the clues dispersed in space. We also assume that a large space was beneficial for usability as it afforded more movable and viewable distance. We derived user-oriented design implications for space-adaptive AR narratives. First, the adaptive placement of augmentations should be leveraged to complement spaces with low traversability, such as clusterizing augmented objects to secure an unobstructed trajectory. Second, blind spots such as space behind the furniture should be removed from the augmented space. Third, these strategies should align with the core experience the content aims for, as trade-offs between factors of narrative experience occur. Finally, the semantic features of the real space should also be considered. We conclude that space adaptive augmentations should reflect the ways in which spatial affordance shapes user movement and perception. In the future, we plan to expand the scope of our study and apply our design implications to test their validity.
Thank you for listening, and please refer to our paper for more details.